Y'all know before any speech I ever make, I always acknowledge my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. And I also acknowledge my wife, Julie, because she's in this fight with me. And I want to thank you guys so much for all you're doing, and thank you for being in here today on this cold, cold Sunday. What a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I tell you what was so funny is I was hearing some people on the pulpit talking about Herschel Walker. Can you believe that? Senator Warnock was talking about Herschel Walker. And he said that uh, because I attacked him, I'm attacking Jesus Christ. He said because I attacked him, I'm attacking Martin Luther King. And I need to tell you what he was talking about. He was talking about those apartment Columbia Towers that he has been evicting people of little means. And what I mean by that is he had said he was a Matthew 25. And you remember in Matthew 25, it says, when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I couldn't be clothed, you clothed me. But it didn't say when I couldn't pay my rent, you evicted me. It didn't say that. And he was talking about that uh, because I'm talking about him, I'm talking about Jesus. And it is written in the Bible. It is written in the Bible that when you talk of a man of God, you are uh, talking about Jesus. But he's not that man of God. And I need to let him know that you're not Jesus and you're not Martin Luther King, sir. You are a slum lord that's taking advantage of poor people that can't pay their rent. You need to admit it. And my father told me about these slick, walking, smooth-talking people. Y'all saw him in that debate. Y'all saw him in that debate. Y'all thought he can beat Herschel Walker in that debate. Let's be real. I made him become scooby doo in that debate, did I not? They asked him, they asked him, said, Sir, uh, would you vote for Biden in 2024? And he said, oh, 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 no. I said, yeah, see, he didn't want to talk then. That's just like right now, he's evicting these people from that apartment. An apartment that he uh, he owned, 99 percent of that apartment is owned by that church. It's owned by that church, a great church that started by Martin Luther King, a church that was started to help people, not to go out and harm people, take advantage of people. And that's what he was doing. That's what he's doing. He need to be accountable because there are people that have died in that in that apartment. Do y'all know that people have died? That's a family members of someone. No one want to be accountable for it. He don't even want to be accountable for it. There's, there's feces in that apartment. And people are living. They live in that mold. That's what he's did put on those people. But then let's not talk about him as a pastor. He's a man out of cloth. Let's talk about him as a senator. Supposed to represent Georgia. Y'all ask me why I'm running. I'm going to tell you why I'm running. I'm one of these guys that I was born in this little town called Wrightsville, Georgia. That I tell everyone, if you got one year to live, you move there, because that year is forever. It's the same old, same old. And, you know, I sometimes think, why did I become a football player? I'm going to tell you the reason I became that football player. Because I was born with this little fat boy, and my mom said I was big bone. And like I said, I was fat. But I used to have a speech impediment, but I couldn't put a sentence together. So, so four years of my life, I never went out for a recess. Four years of my life, I never spoke in a classroom, but because of the grace of God, he has a plan for me. And that plan for me to go to college and get that scholarship to go to the University of Georgia, that plan for what me to get that win, that Heisman Trophy, that plan for, for me to be on the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. And think about it, there's no snow here in Georgia. I made the 1992 Olympic bobsled team. And then I played 15 years of pro football. Can you believe that? 15 years of pro football and God said he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet. So he had to break me. He had to break me. So well, all of a sudden they said, Herschel got a mental problem. I'm talking about myself in third person right now, but I know it. But then what happened as I go to this hospital out in California, I remember sitting in this hospital and I never drank before in my life, never tasted alcohol, never had any beer, never taken any drugs. And I'm like, I got a mental problem. And all of a sudden I said, these people here are crazy. These people here are crazy. I'm not like them. I'm not like them. And God said, he's not ready yet. And then I remember what my mom said. We all fall short of the glory of God. And when you can admit, God, I am a sinner, you can be washed in his blood and be born again. And that's when I got born again. And he said, he's ready now. 
He is ready now because as I was watching television, I knew then who I had to go up against. I had to go up against that wolf in sheep clothing. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Because I happen to be watching television, which is one of the worst things to be doing to watching television. And as I'm watching television, I see this man come up and say, America need to apologize for his whiteness. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. In my Bible, I read, I saw where you don't look at the plank in my, you don't look at the dust in my brother's eye, you look at the plank in my own eye. And it also talks about forgiveness. They do, he's not believing forgiveness and then he even said the problem with america is racism i said wait a minute wait a minute that's not what i read what i read is that you cannot divide god's people because i'm gonna tell you something you may not know what he want to do is he try to divide us i'm gonna go with this little short story i've been telling all along the way and this story goes like this right here there's a man that died early in life he died early in life and as he got to heaven saint peter met him at the pearly gates and St. Peter says, sir, you're here a little bit early right now. So your name ain't on the road. And all of a sudden he says, so you're the only one in history that's going to get an opportunity to decide where you want to go. He said, I'm going to take you to heaven and I'm going to take you to hell. And you can determine where you want to be. So he takes him to hell. And as the doors open up, that was a party going on. Yeah, he saw some of his friends on there. He was having a good time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter said, uh, you ready to go? You ready to go? And the guy said, I got to leave now. I said, yeah, you got a decision to make. So he puts him in this elevator, takes him all the way up to heaven. They get to heaven, there are people floating around on clouds, having a good time. And after a couple of hours, St. Peter said, have you made your mind up? Have you made your mind up? And the guy said, well, St. Pete, I hate to tell you this. I think I'm going to go to hell. Say, that seemed like my type of place down there. I want to go to hell. So St. Peter puts him in his elevator, sends him all the way back down to hell now. The doors open up. It's hot. People are crying. They're having a miserable time. And the guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. A couple of hours ago when I was here, there was a party going on. And Satan shows up and said, a couple of hours ago, I was campaigning. And I said, that's what's happening to you right now. That's what's happening to you right now. That's what I saw from Senator Warnock. He's campaigning by he's lying to you. He's lying to you. And y'all, I'm going to tell you this right here. He spent over $100 million against me already. Can y'all believe that? $100 million in the race is tied. That meant that he don't know how to spend his money. So why is he spending your money? Tell him to quit spending your money. Because let me tell you what. He lied to you because two years ago he went to Washington and he said he was going to represent you, didn't he? And then you see now he didn't represent you. He, went and he bit his bike over let Joe Biden ride his bike and tell him what to do. That's what he's been doing, letting Joe Biden tell him what to do. And I'm saying, you need to straighten up, sir, because Georgia is better than this. We're not going to separate people. Quit trying to separate God's people. 23 of men screwed us all up. We don't know what color we are. But what we do know is we're Americans. Do we not know we're Americans? So we need to get back. We need to get back to being an American because he went to Washington and told us he was going to represent the women. Did he not say that? And then he voted to put men in women's sports. Are you, can you believe that? Put men in women's sports. That's sort of like putting Herschel Walker to compete against your daughter. You don't want that. You don't want that. But yet, but then this is what they're doing. Think about this. He did this here. He voted four times to stop the Keystone Pipeline. Y'all know what that means? That means he gave up our energy. I'm going to tell you what that means. Y'all do, y'all know we can so fertile underneath our feet. We can do our own drilling right underneath our feet. But they told us they don't want to do that. They'd rather go to our enemies to ask for oil and gas. Do y'all know what the definition of an enemy is? An uh, enemy is somebody that don't like you. That, but they've they been telling you they don't know the definition of a woman either. So think about that either. They don't know the definition of a woman. But I'm going to tell you the definition of a woman. Because it's written in my great book. It said a man and a woman. And there's a difference between the two of them. So that's the reason men shouldn't be in women's sport. There's a difference. But then yet they try to tell you a man can get pregnant. Get that out of your head. No, he can't. No, he can't. All they're trying to do is take you down in that elevator. Take you down in that elevator and lie to you. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you, we're in a mess. We're in a mess because we put weak leaders in Washington. Weak leaders in Washington that not representing us. They're telling us, let's defund the police. That's a stupid idea, is it not? Defund the police. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't say it's stupid because I'm a, trying to run for politician now. Not, not, not. And, well, it's a dumb idea. Is it not a dumb idea? That's what it is. Done, let's defund the police.
police, whoever came up with that defund the police, that was a bad idea. But, 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 the guy I'm running against called them thugs and bullies. He called them thugs and bullies. He also think that you should, should have no cash bail, holding people not responsible for what they do. He also believe that you should release prisoners out of jail. And they don't even serve their time. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. In the great book I read, the great book I read, it talks about Adam and Eve. And it said, God said, from this place here, you have total freedom. But if you eat or touch this tree here, you will surely die. They were held to a responsibility. We need leaders in Washington that's going to hold people responsible. Because have y'all seen the crime in the street today? The crime in the street today is because we got a senator in Washington, ain't Senator Warnock. He decided to let people out of jail. I'm saying, yeah, that won't happen on my watch. I can promise you it won't happen on my watch. People will be held accountable for who they are, what they are. Because as my father told me no, he meant no. And then he tell me no, I know he meant no. And then when I got too big for my bridges and I decided to do what I want to do, he said, boy, if you don't like the rules underneath my roof, you can leave my house. And that's what we need to get leaders in Washington that said, if you don't like the rules of the United States of America, you can leave. We don't have to have you here. We don't need you here. What we need to do... We need to get back to who we are, and we are good people. But then this is what's so bad. Do they, they talk about make America great again like that's a bad term? You live here in America. Shouldn't you want to be great? I want to be great. I'm tired of being second. I'm like Ricky Bobby. I'm not second. You're not second. So none of us are second. But what we got to do, we got to get out and vote. On December the 6th or the early voting, you got to get out and vote. Tell 10 of your friends to get out and vote. And if you don't have no friends, go make some friends tell them to get out and vote. This we got to get this straight, people. We got to get it straight because I'm telling you right now, Senator Warnock is trying to fool you right now because some of the greatest people that know him told you that he's a good actor. They told you he was a good actor. The other day, I saw a commercial. Can you believe this? I saw a commercial. He's talking about me. And then I see him with a dog. He was with this dog named Alvin. That Alvin don't even belong to him. That ain't even his dog. And he's trying to fool you like he got a dog. That's not even his dog. Alvin belonged to somebody else. I've been looking for Alvin. I haven't found Alvin there either. Alvin is an actor like he's an actor. He's trying to fool you. Don't let him take you down that elevator and lie to you like he's been lying to you already. I'm going to tell you right now. He told you he's a Georgia, represented Georgia. He hasn't represented Georgia since he got to Washington. All he done, he got wealthy. He got wealthy as these people are starving in that, this apartment building. He driving in his nice car dressed in those nice suits. Like I said, my father told me about people like that. They told me about people like that. Don't trust them. Don't trust them unless they can get their hands dirty. My hands get dirty because I've been down in the dirt. His hand was kind of it wasn't dirty. I can tell you that. He never been working at all. He never done a job in his whole life. He lived off his parishioners and he lived off taxpayers. Let me tell you, I built my own company and I built them with these hands. And these hands here came in my offensive lineman. You said, Horsha, you follow me. I'm going to take you to the promised land. So I'm going to tell all you, vote for me. We all get to the promised land. Because we get there together. We get there together. And that's what I'm about. We get there together because that's how we get it done. And I'm going to tell you this here. And then talking about our military. Our military. Think about this. All these great politicians stand in front of you. And they stand here and say, there's peace through strength. They sound so good when they say those words. But yet, I'm going to tell you this. If we don't support our military, we'll have no strength, and I can guarantee we'll have no peace. Because that's what is happening right now. They have talked about, Senator Warnock talked about bringing pronouns into our military. Pronoun? What the heck is a pronoun? A pronoun? I can tell you right now, grenades don't know nothing about no pronoun. Bullets don't know what color your skin is, but yet they talking about pronouns. I'm still doing push-ups and sit-ups. That's what we need to have them doing. Push-ups and sit-ups, not pronouns. And now they got the morale down, confidence is down, because we got these weak leaders in Washington. Because I can promise you this, they talking about the Green New Deal. I can promise you China and Russia not talking about charging a tank out in the desert. They're talking about war. That's what we got to get back to, talking about war. Giving our men and women in service the, the, the requirement, the things they need to get done, Get that job done, get it done right, so we can make them safe. Because they want to come home safe like everybody else want to come home safe. But if we keep these leaders and leaders in Washington, because y'all saw what he did in Afghanistan, did you not? Who has held them responsible for that? 
13 members died. Has anyone talked about that? Senator Warnock hadn't held them accountable. I tell you what, that's the reason I decided to run. Because God, oh, I don't need no politician no more. He need that warrior that he's been getting me built for. And I'm that warrior that's going to Washington. Because when I go, Jesus Christ going with me. Hey, wait, wait, wait. He can block and I can run. I can tell you that right now. Because I'll tell you this right here. It is time that we get things right. And the way we get it right by getting the right people. That is not afraid to say no. Like my father said no. Because we cannot continue to go like we're going. In less than two short years. Y'all see where we at? Less than two short years. The gas prices are up. Hey, is your wallet feel any better than it felt the two years ago? I guarantee it don't. As the bill goes up, your utility bill is up. Is it not? Your gas bill is up. Is it not? Your grocery bill is up. Hey, you got to buy a turkey. Are y'all going to buy a turkey or chicken? Which one are you going to buy? A turkey or a chicken this time Thanksgiving? It's because of Senator Warnock. I can guarantee he eating turkey. He eating turkey because he don't care about no one else. If he care, he will be taking care of the people in that apartment. If he care, he'll be doing the right thing by the people that he went to Washington to do. And that's what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Washington to protect our military. I'm going to go to Washington to protect our uh, police. I'm going to go to Washington to protect the women. But I'm also going to go to Washington to protect our kids. Y'all don't know they're trying to do to our kids right now. I want to tell you what they're trying to do to our kids. You may not have heard this because our president called people of the parents trying to get involved with our kids domestic terrorists. Because you want to find out what you're trying to teach my kids? Call them domestic terrorists. Do they not know the definition of a terrorist? That terrorists don't like you either. And then they calling people those names. Do you not know they got into the name calling? Y'all seen the names they've been calling me? Wow, they've been calling me all types of names. Can you believe they called me a coon the other day? Oh, yes, they did. Y'all know you can't believe. Oh, but they don't know I'm from the country. I'm from the country. Hey, and I know a coon is one of the smartest animals out there. So don't think that's going to hurt my feelings. Don't think that's going to hurt my feelings. What hurt my feelings is seeing people die on the streets up there in Atlanta. What hurt my feelings is seeing somebody can't afford groceries. What hurt my feelings is seeing you going to the schoolhouse telling my kids, I'm not going to teach you how to read and write. I'm going to teach you about CRT. What hurt my feelings, I'm not going to teach you about math. I'm going to teach you about gender ideology. What hurt my feelings is going to the schoolhouse not having nobody to protect my kids by putting me and women's sport. That's what hurt my feeling. So calling me names don't bother me. I would call names as a little kid. And you know what? I'm Herschel Walker today. And I love Herschel. I didn't love him a long time ago. I love Herschel. And you got to love you. So that's what I say. I'm decided to run. And they talked about this border. They talked about this border. Y'all see our vice president said this border was secure? Are y'all serious? They're trying to take us down in that elevator, tell us this is the new normal. This ain't the new normal. Well, all we need is better leaders in Washington to try, try, trying to trick you. They're trying to take you down in this elevator. I'm going to tell y'all something you may not know. Do you know 70% of the drugs coming from the southern border go through Atlanta, Georgia? And they, Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it do. Go through Atlanta, Georgia because they won't protect the border. Hey, we are a country of immigrants, but we also are a country of laws. And we got to get back to the law. And we get back to the law and people say, Herschel, what are you going to do about it then? I'm going to tell you one thing I do about the border. This is very simple. Why don't we get judges and put them down at the border so we can try people as they come right over? And then if they don't make it, you send them right back. You go back home. You don't blow them here. And then what you can do to stop something to get the, the economy back to going, why don't we start drilling on our own oil? Because I'm tell you, we can drill ourselves and they talk about the green agenda. Hey, let me tell you this. When we can get, we can get to the green agenda. I raise my hand. We're not ready yet. We're not ready yet. Guys, we can't do this right now. I'll tell you, you know, I'm from the country. Y'all know I'm from the country. I'm this country boy. I happen to be doing what they call the agriculture week. And I happen to ask a couple of farmers a question. My question, I asked them, I said, what would a combine cost today? And let me tell you, a used combine is $500,000. That's a lot of money. So I asked them, I said, what would a what would an electric combine cost? They said about $1.8 million. That's a whole lot of money right there. But one thing that shocked you, they said you can only use it for two hours, then you got to charge it. It won't work. It won't work because you got to have your crop at a certain time. So right now, we're not ready for this right now. We're not ready, so they're trying to throw something on you that you're not ready for. We need somebody in Washington to say, no, not right now. We got to use what we got. But we're doing the job. We're doing a good job by doing what we're doing right now. But we need help. We need China to also to step up. We need any to step up. 
Well, we can't just do it alone, people. We can't do it alone, but if we keep the people in Washington, they're going to have us woke and broke. They're going to have us woke and broke, because that's what they're trying to do to us right now. But I can tell you, not on my watch. Not on my watch. I want to leave you with this right here. I'm going to leave you with this, because this, like I said, I'm this country boy, and it was about this bull that was out in the field with six cows. He had six cows, and, and, and three of the cows were expecting calves. And he had grass all the way up to his kneecaps. And all this boy had to do was eat grass. All he had to do was eat grass, but no, 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 no. He kept his nose up against the fence, looking at six other cows in his other field that didn't belong to him. And all of a sudden, he said, no, 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 I want to get over there. He said, I want to be over there still to worry about what he had. So when he decided that day came when he measured that fence up, and he got back out a certain distance. He took off running, and he dove over that fence, and his belly got cut up all under the bottom. And as he got cut up under the bottom, he made it on the other side. He rolled over and stood up. And he said, whoa, he was so excited, he ran to the top of the hill. But when he got up there, he realized that they were bulls too. So I'm going to tell you this here. Don't think, don't think something is better somewhere else. Because I remember talking about this flag right here. Y'all remember when uh, Francis Scott Key went to the British ship to get rid of, to try to start prisoner with the British ships. And when he got over to the British ship, the British captain said, uh, well, Mr. Key, we're not going to start prisoner with you right now. Said, what, what we want you to do is lower your flag. Now, this is a true story here. He said, you lower this flag and we'll swap prisoner with you. And Mr. Key said, sir, I'm not sure if I can do that. And he said, uh, well, if you don't lower this flag, you see all the ships we got out here on this water? We're going to bomb this flag and I guarantee we can take it down. So when you're hearing the national anthem, the red glare in the air and all the stuff they're talking about, they're talking about the British ships bombing our flag. But all of a sudden, at the end of the National Anthem, you hear how when everything cleared and daylight came, that flag was still there. And you know the reason that flag stayed there? Because everyone that believes in the freedoms and the liberties that we have right now, as they were dying, they laid that dead body up against that flag to keep it up. And I said, right now, that's what we're looking for. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And that's what I'm here to do. And that's why I said, I'm going to be that warrior that's now ready to fight for my country because I believe in the liberties and freedoms and the way we get it, we get it together. If we don't get it together, we have nothing at all because a house divided will not stand. And what we have to do is stand up for the United States of America. God bless you guys. Thank you guys so much. God bless you.